Hey all, this is Martin from How To Make Mobile Games. It's March the 24th, 2013, and it has been a while since I did my last video for the channel. I think it was probably in December last year, and time has kind of flown since then, so it doesn't feel like it's been that long for me. Uh, but it's probably about three to four months since I last did a video. And, um, you know, first off, I just want to say sorry I've not updated the channel. I know I say this quite a lot, uh, probably because I'm, well, because I am so busy. Uh, it's basically, um, it's been a really busy couple of months uh, since since December. And I've done a lot of things and a lot of updates. And I know that a lot of you have, have sent messages and said, hey, you know, uh, could you answer this or could you do a new tutorial video uh, and I just want to say a great big thanks to everyone for the support and, and liking the videos and subscribing um, you know I really really wish I could do more more tutorials and, and more sort of code based videos because uh, it's it's something that I do enjoy it's just kind of the focus at the moment is really development and publishing so but hopefully one day who knows I'll be I'll be very very free and and uh, I can focus more on the channel, or if one day I become a, a millionaire or a billionaire, then I can then I can do more more videos for you guys. Uh, but in the meantime, I just wanted to give a bit of an update and maybe some tips on iPhone and, and um, uh, iOS and Android publishing and developing for games, uh, and maybe some things that help you guys out. Because I know the business-related stuff is also something that you're interested in and that you want to know more about, and it's also something that we uh, a lot of people don't talk about on video. So. Yeah, I hope I hope you find this useful because there's a lot of code examples out there, but maybe not so many business-related uh, videos. So uh, the first thing is, like I said, this quick uh, this quick video is is basically um, it's not a code video, it's not a tutorial video, it's just a sort of tips video and an update on what I've been doing this past few months. So a uh, first thing is, um, you know, uh, the single-player games when they're published onto iPhone or Android, uh, generally. Uh, unless the game is very good or unless it has a lot of content like a lot of levels in it it is hard for a single player game to do very very well there are a few amazing examples out there you know for example like Temple Run 2 was recently published and, and obviously the first game as well was extremely popular and did extremely well and that's just a single level run forever game but generally what I'm finding and what probably most publishers or developers will tell you is that games that only have single player levels in them generally don't have a huge return rate or the replay value is not that high uh, the content is just not very very big so I've been trying to figure out a way to get uh, to get more uh, to get players to stay in the game and have more fun and give them you know more value and therefore we can obviously make more revenue as well so what I'm doing is I'm working with experimenting now with some online code uh, using unity and the unity web player so one of the things that I'm doing is I'm using this exitgames.com uh, photon and I'll, I'll open the page here which is this one I recommend checking it out basically photon is um, is a server-side solution so that you can have online multiplayer gameplay in your games from a standalone uh, PC version to an Android uh, or an iPhone version on a mobile and it plugs directly into unity as well it has a unity plugin so I'm experimenting with this right now, and it's pretty cheap from what I can see. I recommend checking out, you know, the pricing over here. I I won't show you here because it might update soon, but you can check it out. And also the documentation is pretty clear as well. Uh, but the thing is, I want to get some online gameplay into our games because the single player games are fun. We get four and five stars all the time, but the gameplay, like the return rate or the the lifetime of that, is not very high because players. They'll play the game a couple of times, it's fun, it's great, but then there's nothing else really to keep them coming back to it. But multiplayer, playing with your friends or playing with just random people around the world is very cool. Uh, and it adds a lot of fun, so I'm checking this out. Um, if you do check this out, guys, uh, just FYI, that it, if you want to have online multiplayer through Exit Games Photon, you need the full version of Unity, the full license, which is more expensive than the standard license. You can't use the basic iPhone or, or Android license uh, to and, and put Photon in the game. If you want to buy the full license at the moment, it's $1,500 for Unity Pro, which is the basic, uh, uh, the basic package. And then on top of that, you need the extra licenses for iPhone and Android, and those are $1,500 each. So if you did all of them together, that's $4,500. Uh, and that's quite a stretch. So uh, I'm sort of experimenting around now with the web player version of online using Exit Games to see how sticky it is. And what I'm going to do is once that's live, once I've got the online version going, 
then uh, I will post this online on the channel and you, if you guys want to join me and play me and give me some feedback that's great and you can play through your web player on Chrome or, or Internet Explorer um, and then hopefully I can explain some of the code and, and give you guys some tips. So definitely check out exitgames.com. I think adding multiplayer is great. Uh, on the Amazon side of things, um, I would, uh, what's it say? Sorry, still doing better. Yeah, Amazon still does better than Google Play for in-app purchases. Google Play is a massive market. It's huge. Uh, there's far more countries and far more downloads in Google Play. But Amazon purchase rate is far better for us than Google Play. And, you know, the argument could be that, well, you know, maybe our games are not quite as large or maybe the player doesn't want to purchase as much on in your games than other games. But we have the same games on Google Play and Amazon, and the Amazon in-app purchase percentage rate is much higher. So definitely, guys, get your games onto Amazon. I recommend it. The documentation is very clear. The um, On prime31.com, that's prime31, then they have their plugin for the Amazon App Store, and we, we're using that one very straightforward. Um, there was a little bit of... Uh, it's a little bit complicated doing the manifest file, but... Um, I recommend definitely, even with that trouble, it's still worth it, you know what I mean? It took me about a day to figure it out, but it, it was well worth it, so check it out. Uh, the other thing I've been doing, so we started a, uh, a small publishing company recently uh, with, with my partners here in, here in China, and basically we're called pandatapgames.com. And what we do is we our goal is to to publish Chinese games overseas and and help developers here, like publish over onto the Amazon App Store or iPhone and, and help market the games as well, of course, and cross promote. So uh, of course anybody can do this themselves, but they either don't have the time for marketing or perhaps they don't know the uh, the overseas landscape. But what we're also doing is we're publishing foreign games. So for example, any developers in North America, we're also publishing your games over into the Amazon App Store as well, or even here in China, or we can just cut up markets. So uh, we're doing that, and it's going pretty well, and we launched our first game called Pop the Fruit 2, which is free on the Amazon App Store. So if anybody has an Android device with Amazon installed, you can get the Amazon App Store for free. Or if anybody has a Kindle, please check it out. Download and give me five stars, please. Um, it's free, so I hope you enjoy it. It's a lot bigger. It's from a Chinese developer, and it's a lot bigger than the other games that I've done before. And it's a sort of, it's like a bubble shooting game where you match three, but there's sort of a puzzle element to it. So, uh, but if anybody out there is interested in publishing uh, their games with us, then you can drop me a message, and we can give you some details. You know, we're looking at iPhone and Android, uh, maybe just particular app stores. Maybe you would, you know, you don't want to give us Google, but you'd like to give us the Amazon App Store, or maybe just iPhone in the U.S. market, or maybe just iPhone China. We're pretty flexible on that. So, um, you know, if you're interested, drop me a message. So, um, next thing. So, yeah, some, some statistics here. So, I updated a couple of games on iPhone and Android to include a, a like button for, for a Facebook page. Um, and this so far has been pretty useful. So, if you play a game uh, uh, Gangnam Style versus Dance Zombies on iPhone or Android, once the game is over, it gets this pop-up that says, hey, play again, more games, um, tap our like button on Facebook to get a hundred free zombies or gold zombies which is like the currency and also get a hundred free zombies to um, when you send us your score on email and that's been really useful having that post game pop-up screen much more useful than having the buttons in the main menu my opinion is if the buttons are in the main menu players will skip over that if they finished a game session and they're moving on to the next game or they want to do something else on their mobile then have that more games pop up after the game finishes because they might be looking to play another game or just browsing through say the app store or the google play market and you can have that pop up and say oh more games okay i'll check it out and then they'll go on to that one so i'll show you some statistics for gandam style versus dance zombies uh, here i'm tracking in localytics.com you can see it's had 50,000 sessions. Now, the game hasn't been downloaded that often, and it's not, it's not a hugely popular game. But I think the percentage is uh, something that, that you'll find more interesting. So roughly 50,000 sessions since it was launched. So that's total sessions. That might be one player has played the game 10 times, and that's, so that's 10 sessions. So this one here, I'm tracking the, uh, the number of times uh, the user taps the Rate the Game button. So after the game finishes, there's a Rate Game button that comes in. Uh, onto the screen and players tap it and that's been tapped 4,000 times um, 
50,000 sessions uh, 4,000 times is roughly, I think, 8%, something like this. Uh, so 8% of the time, people are tapping the post-game um, uh, rate the game button. Uh, and roughly, say, 7 or 8%, people are tapping the more games button, which is, which is great to see. So when they tap the more games button, it actually goes to our uh, publisher's page on the iPhone App Store or the Android Google Play Market, and it shows all of our applications. It doesn't just go to one application. Uh, my opinion is if you do a more games button, make sure to lead the player to your your account page which shows all of your games, not just one of the games. Because they might browse through and then see an icon that looks interesting or a name that's, that looks interesting. So we've looked like we've got a 7 or 8% uh, click-through rate on the more games button, which is, which is great. I mean, 3,600 times people have tapped on more games. Um, 3,000 times, maybe that's around, what, uh, maybe 6 or 5% perhaps. Uh, people have sent us uh, their email to send us their score, so uh, that's great. We get to we get to then you know reply to people and say, hey, these are our other games. You know, keep in touch. And of course, people can unsubscribe to emails. We don't we don't spam them with with loads of junk every day or anything like that. It's just one instant reply, and then people can see what other games we have. Uh, and then people have tapped our like Facebook page um, one thousand eight hundred times. So that's a lot lower. Um, and I think. Um, I don't know if that's sort of 3 or 4%, something like this. But what it does is basically just leads the player on the device to go to our Facebook fan page here, which uh, just says, hey, post your score below. And we've had people start to post their scores and leave some comments. Um, you know, we've had a 220 likes so far, which is not very high. So, but I mean, that's good. That's just an automatic marketing thing. And whenever we update something here, like a new video, then people will see that video like for example here we've, we've got a Gangnam Style video and we've also got a Pop the Fruit video uh, on the Amazon App Store so that that will slowly slowly build up and it's a great way to talk to the players as well like we message back to these players or, or leave comments and so on and um, you know I'm sure this will just grow but it's just it's just one button tap people come to the, the Facebook page and they like it there's no Facebook SDK integration it is just the web page of Facebook that it leads to that might be why the likes are kind of low, but it's an easy way to get uh, a Facebook like uh, function into the game. So, all right, so let me see the next thing. Okay, so the other thing is uh, we started to experiment with chartboost.com as well, uh, which is uh, um, an ad network, which is very popular at the moment. And what they do is they do full screen ads, interstitial, they're called interstitial ads and they pop up and it's non-incentivized that means that the player isn't like said hey you get a hundred coins if you download this game uh, it's just um, an interstitial ad network which has full screen ads so that's going pretty well so far I mean we what we're doing is we're putting this uh, interstitial ads uh, chart boost into our uh, games through uh, uh, the games that we're publishing from other developers through our new business pandatapgames.com and uh, so far we're testing that and I, in terms of revenue or impressions, I can't really say much right now, uh, but I do know a lot of developers use Chartboost and so what I, I'm just mentioning this here because I can sort of report back to you guys and give you some tips and advice and tell you how it's going generally once, once, uh, once it's kind of up and running, so uh, just FYI. So uh, last thing anyway, you know, thank you for all the comments, all the subscribes uh, and, and questions. I've also seen some people answer questions back and forth from the other users, uh, the, other, the other people who have, who have posted comments, and that's, that's so awesome to see. So thank you, and thank you for subscribing. You know, um, that, that, uh, keeps, that keeps, uh, gives me a, a real smile on my face whenever I see somebody say, oh, thank you for the video. So, um, you know, and hopefully, like I said before, I'm going to come back and do more and more and more you know, if you find this video useful, if you're finding these tips videos useful or the, just these general update videos useful, please let me know. Please drop a comment, like, and subscribe, and then that kind of helps me direct. Okay, I don't have a lot of time to do uh, programming tutorial videos, but I can have some more time to do, you know, a, a, uh, a tips video focused on something because the, these generally take uh, don't take as much time as uh, programming tutorial videos, so I can definitely focus here. And, uh, you know, for everyone, uh, you know, have a, have a great week. Like I said, if you're interested in publishing your game, iPhone or Android, and you're looking for a publisher, then drop me a message on, on, uh, on YouTube or, or, you know, leave your email in the comment and then I can, I can get back to you. But anyway, everyone have a great weekend, uh, happy developing, and I will speak to you all soon, okay? Bye.